Yes folks, as you can see here, one Suzuki SV650 and this is the S model with a handlebar conversion so it's more kind of dirt bike positioning but it's still got the high pegs and a very nice two Toro oil filler there which I love and today we've got to adjust the clutch so tools for doing this are very simple all you need is one very large lump hammer a file I'm joking you don't really need that um, I've modified mine so all it's got on it is a set of allen bolts and then I'm gonna whip everything off and we'll go from there so you shall be seeing very soon all this cover here yep that one all coming off and underneath that is going to be my drive sprocket in there and underneath this yep that lump there that is my clutch worm gear coming from my clutch lever up here which is looking a bit wobbly cheap Japanese or cheap Taiwanese shit or Chinese shit actually but anyway so there we go yes this is me I'm looking shit and um, yeah lovely there we go paddock stand and uh, yeah speak to you in a moment right so I've undone the bolts up here down here and down there, as you can see and it's just fallen off so what we're going to do is we're going to take this out which is a little fiddly there we go exposing that nice so as you can see there lovely and nice and yes I'm wearing chav trainers to work on my motorcycle so all looking a bit grimy there's all sorts of nasties in there but we should be able to clean that up lovely so what I'm going to do in a moment is I'm going to remove this part here I'm going to disconnect this cable from here this is the clutch cable and this is my worm gear mechanism I want to take this off and make sure it's running with lots of grease and behind there you might just be able to see in there but is the push rod which goes from the worm gear to activate the clutch lovely um, yeah and already ugh, gross so that's that right what I've done here is I've released the clutch cable that bit there which I'm not sure you can see moving very well so that means I can release this from here inside this unit here okay which the cable comes into is a small bendy metal clip in there which you need to release and then hopefully what will happen is you can pop that out of there just like that there we go one clutch released Ugh. And this unit here is my worm gear, which I'm about to tell. This is looking in a very sorry state. Okay, I haven't lubricated this for a little while. It is looking really quite grotesque. And as you can see, I've now moved on to the rubber gloves because everything is icky. There you go. I hope you uh, hope you're enjoying this kind of adventure into filth. Look at all this nastiness down here. This is the only problem with running. A motorcycle they do get dirty but we love them right I've taken out the lower bolt now it's time to take out the top one and what this should do is allow our worm gear to come loose just like that there we go there's the mechanism hanging there like that. We've got a collection of bolts just there and we take that off there. There we go. Ugh, gross, nasty, icky, dirty, filthy worm gear. Dirty, icky, filthy push rod. Ugh, that needs cleaning up. Right then. So, there we go. This bike is now going nowhere. I suppose you could bang it into gear if you wanted to, but it's not very good for it, let's be honest. So, uh, and all that's come loose as well. That's the 
lead there for the stand so it tells the engine whether or not the stand's down before it goes into gear because obviously you know they need to think for us because we're too stupid to know if our own side stand is down so I don't know yep enough of my ranting I'm going to carry on getting filthy enjoy right what you can see here ooh, ooh. Okay. There we go. Try and get it. That thing there. You see there's some gnar rather nasty rusty segments on there. This is the push rod. It goes in there. Technically it goes that way. You can tell by a nice clean end. Uh, this is the bit that disengages the clutch, I suppose, or separates the plates. When you pull the lever, the worm gear pushes that into the engine. Like that. Ooh, look at that. And uh, yeah, you can see it's got some builds up, so of corrosion on it. So I'm going to use a bit of wire wool to get that off. Now, a good tip here, if you haven't got wire wool, you can actually use the chin hair from a postmenopausal woman. There we go, we're looking a little bit cleaner now. That's going to pop back in there very, very carefully. And in she slides. So there we go. That's my push rod back in. Just like that. Nice and simple. So you can see there, look. Like that. Now, down here, I've got my engine number and lots and lots of filth. Now, part of me is tempted to get in there with a tough brush, clean that up, but another part of me is going, why bother? Let's be honest, it's only going to get filthy again. And it's a motorcycle, not a museum piece. And I use it every day. At some point, I do want to get down here and start playing with all the bits down here, the suspension linkages and so on. I want to take all these off, get this a service, because I suspect that's probably as dry as an old lady's chuff. <sighs> Yuck. Gross. I'd also really like one day to put a nice rear shock in there as well, because that one, frankly, is awful. And... Well, okay, Awful's going, stretching it a bit. It's not very good. I have got some space under there, so I could use one of those nice GSXR shocks with the independent thingy, which might possibly interfere a little bit with the battery box in there. But I don't think it's going to be too much of a worry on my lovely K3. So, yeah, the advantage of the K3 is that it has a slightly higher back end. Right, next thing I'm going to do is obviously the bit that goes there, which is now down here on the floor. has had a really good spray over, but needs to be cleaned up because it's covered in filth and grit. Oh, and there goes the local cars driving past. Look at the state of that. Oh dear, I wouldn't want to touch that with somebody else's. So, let's see what we can do. We shall get that clean and nice and looking pleasant and hopefully working again so that it feels nice and smooth as opposed to feeling like an old lady's you get the idea God, I'm obsessed with old ladies today hmm anyway, I'll speak to you in a moment right then, as you can see
all nicely greased up now. So my good old Pace RC7S um, grease gun, lovely little thing, wouldn't be without it. I um, originally bought that for my mountain bike, which I no longer ride, because I've got this monster, which I do love. Right, this is now full of grease, as you can see in there. All lovely, and all I've got to do now is sort out the mechanism down here, give that a bit of a clean up. That holds the spring to return it back to its, I suppose, its um, closed position, or its open I don't know. What's it going to be? Open, probably where it's not engaging so and then that'll put it all back on there back onto the push rod and then adjust it all up and make it so it runs lovely and yes as you can see it's um, still looking a bit manky in there but that doesn't matter for now right what we've done now is we've put the mechanism back together adjustment is via this little grub screw in the middle and the locking nut on the outside so push the grub screw in Plus, until it touches the push rod and back it off by about half a turn with less probably less than that about a third of a turn and then nip it and then you nip it up using the locking nut just there very simple just like that blah 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 and then as you can see put it all back together slot the cover back on and right then, once you're all finished it should look like that again so everything's all back together all very boring, very tedious, and uh, yeah, that's how you adjust your worm gear. And don't forget, if you need to clean up your push rod, if you need to sort it all out, give us a sh What was that? <laughs>